What's up everyone, Sixpenny here, and today I'm gonna provide a beginner's guide to improving your skills in PGA Tour 2K23. I'm gonna be doing a full tutorial series on this video game, so stay tuned to the channel, click the subscribe button, and be ready for tons of gameplay videos, career mode videos, but also tutorial videos on different aspects of the game to help you improve. This video is mostly designed on beginners. You just picked up this game and you want to know ways to improve and kind of the best way to practice and get better at the different mechanics of the game. I'm also going to go over some of the different mechanics as well, such as elevation, wind, I'm going to touch on some different aspects and then dive into those in future tutorials as well. You can check out the full tutorial playlist in the description if you're looking for more of them. But let's have some fun here. Hey, drop a like if you get some enjoyment. If you find this helpful, it is greatly appreciated and really helps out the channel. But when you open up the game and you're in the game and you go in and practice for the first time, this game, depending on what difficulty you start on, right? This game is going to be filled really hard on the default matchmaking difficulty setting. So, what, what I, if you plan to play multiplayer, you plan to play anything like that, I think it's best to just go ahead and start on the pro difficulty as we take a look at the difficulty settings here. That's your big important thing when you open up the game. The decision to make. What difficulty do you want to play the game on, right? Uh, so, I usually say... And the reason I say, if we go to guest here, the reason I say that pro is the best way to start, there's a few reasons for that. The primary reason is that the, the pro vision, wind, lie penalty, lie angle, elevation, all of these four, basically in the other settings, when these are turned on, they do the math for you. So pro elm, they're not on but when you go to amateur they're on so what this is doing it's going ahead and calculating based on each shot you have it's taking into account all the information so that's the, and you're not learning it right because the game's just doing it for you that's the reason i don't really recommend anybody starting on beginner amateur i think the best start is either pro elm or pro a benefit of pro elm is that you can learn putting so you can turn on putt previews and actually learn the learn how to read putts but for today's purposes we're going to be playing on the default pro difficulty setting so i'm going to go ahead and change my settings over to pro so you can see that and let's go ahead and dive on out into the course so this is the default matchmaking difficulty setting so what i recommend you first at this game you need to the best place to improve your tempo your overall game swing playing is to go into casual and go into the training facility training is going to become your best place your favorite place it is the most important place to spend your time or just out there on the golf course but i'm going to show you a few reasons why the practice facility is so good so as we head to the main practice facility, it's going to take you to this screen. And I know a lot of you all are going to ask the question, swing calibration. What does it do and should you do it? Swing calibration itself is designed to recalibrate your swing. So it basically changes that perfect tempo. So when I get to the course and I hit a tempo, so say I hit the shot, we hit a slight fast. You can see it on the right side of the screen, the yellow circle, if you're new, that shows wh what your tempo was. Your tempo and swing plane are big determinants of where the ball goes. So basically that was a fast, right? So let's see if, if I, basically what the calibration does, it changes that perfect, perfect region. It changes your swing tempo. So say you're completely slow. Say I hit this drive. I like to go into practice swing when I practice because you don't have to watch the ball fly every time. So just go into practice swing and keep swinging. So we hit that perfect. That tempo felt great to me. But if I go into and change in the calibration, it's going to change that swing. I actually recommend you don't 
do that. I played this game on PC and Xbox so far. The default swing calibration is really good. It is really good. When you mess around with it, it changes it. And I know some people have the have the uh, belief and I you know ha and I get it. Some people think that they re they need to recalibrate their swing each time they play to their new tempo. I like to think of it as muscle memory. If you're changing your perfect tempo every single time, every single time I log on to the game, my brain has to relearn that perfect tempo. I personally want to hit the same. I want to fight for the same perfect tempo every single time. The game's default polling points. The game's default tempo polling points. I want to be able to hit that same. I want the perfect to be the same every single time. So that from a muscle memory standpoint, after I play this game 60 hours, 100 hours, I'm going to know that perfect. And I'm going to be able to hit that perfect or at least close to it theoretically over time. That is the reason I recommend you. The biggest tip I can give you as a beginner is to not touch the swing calibration. Learn that perfect swing calibration. But that's only if you're on tempo swing, right? What's cool about the game this year is you can actually change the control type. So if you don't like the tempo, that's too tough. One thing, you can turn tempo off in the difficulty settings if you want, or you can change the swing type to three click. So on three click, that's a new feature this year. If you don't like the analog stick, you can't swing straight. It's difficult for you to do that. Then you have the three click swing here at the bottom right of the screen. You can see that. So three click this year, the way it, it's really hard. Honestly, I think it's the hardest way to swing it. There's two ways to swing in this game. This is by far the hardest to me. So you hold down the A button and stop it at the white. And then you hit the A button at the top. You're trying to get it in that yellow region and the bottom. That is how three click works. I think it's the hardest way to play this game. Over time, I think if I practice it, I think it would be, I could get it and it could end up being easy. But that isn't, if you're struggling with analog, you could switch to three click and maybe you can get it down, right? Again, in this game, practice makes perfect. But I just wanted to show you all that. So if you get frustrated with analog, you can't sling, swing straight. I, you know, switch to three click. But this video specifically, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk more about the analog. But you can do the practice, the same techniques with the other swing method as well. The beauty about this game, you can play it however you want to. All right, so cut here. I came in and filmed this after the video because I wanted to. This seemed like a good point for me to mention something. So a big question I got last year all the time in the comment section is what dictates your tempo your it is your tempo in this game is only your downswing tempo your backswing tempo when you're pulling the stick back and your club is going up your backswing speed has nothing to do with your downswing i mean your tempo downswing is what registers that actual tempo so the fast slow or perfect anywhere along the, that spectrum there is the downswing so it's all in the downswing motion now the backswing if you if you're struggling with the downswing being too fast maybe slow down your backswing a little bit it can help your rhythm so you want to actually focus on the backswing because it helps the rhythm of the swing so i wanted to insert this let's get on with the video so after the in this game the hardest thing is tempo and swing plane. So that basically refers to swing plane is how straight you pull back, how straight you push. So keep in mind, my swing plane is good. I've been playing this game, this whole series since the very first game. I played out to, I played almost 2000 hours in PGA 2K21. So I have the swing plane down on my Xbox One controller. So I'm using the Xbox Series controller. You can see it right there. It's just the stock Xbox. It's not, I mean, it's it's a cool, a cool looking one, but it's just the base Xbox Series X controller. I have used a PS5 controller. I can say that for tempo, this controller is really good. I am one of the rare players who actually swings on my left thumbstick. So right, I swing on my left thumbstick here. Uh, most, a lot of players actually swing with the right stick. 
So the reason I choose the Xbox over the PlayStation is thumb alignment. I cannot swing the different thumb alignment on this PS5 controller. I can't get the I can't get the swing down. I, I can't hit swing play. But on the Xbox controller, I can actually I'll stand up and put the controller close here and show you how I grip the controller as well. Uh, so if you take a look at this, if I can get it perfectly, I know it's not the greatest. Get it just right, but here I grip my controller just like a typical standard controller grip here and my thumb is just resting right here so when i swing i can hit a straight swing path or slightly to the right because i'm standing up a little bit kind of i'm kind of tilted to be on the camera here but that is my swing plane that that is how that is my grip i know i got a lot of questions now i actually have a webcam this year you can see my swing a hand count so that is how i swing Right there. But you can mess around with different grips. So some people do a pincer grip where they grab it like this. Oh, I'm terrible. I can't do that. As some people can do it easily. I can't actually do that. Some people will use... So that's left thumb. If I was right thumb, it'd be the same. I don't like the alignment. I would swing like this, right? I'd swing like this. So... A lot of some people, very few, some people actually their right thumb on the left stick. This I you you can see what happens when I do that. I don't like that. Uh, so I just wanted to show you different methods because you can use mess around if you can't hit tempo, you can't hit swing plane. Change your grip a little bit. Change your thumb placement. Maybe you put your more of your middle of your thumb. On the grip like this maybe you do just you do just the tip of the thumb on it me personally i like this relaxed grip and swing that way uh, so that that is how i do it. i got a lot of questions on my grip in 2k21 so it's nice i have the webcam now i can actually show you all the grip that i actually use uh, so that that is what i choose when i say choose one left stick right stick Practice with both, whatever, whichever one feels best to you, or if three click is your favorite, choose three click, right? That's the beauty of the game. You could choose whatever you want. And then after you mess around with different grips, different way to hold the controller, some people like to place the controller in their lap for more stability. Some people like to place the controller on their desk or so something solid and don't they don't even hold the controller. They just place it there and just move the thumb. I can't do that. But there's a lot of different things. Experiment. I'm telling you all, if you all are struggling, experiment. Find the one that feels the most comfortable for, to you. I In the beginning, they're all going to probably feel weird and you're good, probably going to struggle. And that brings to the next most important step. Practice, practice, practice. You have to hit thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of golf shots. I could go on to... Hundreds of thousands. The reason is that is muscle memory. You don't learn any muscle pattern, any movement pattern, especially of the thumb, after a week in a video game. Some people in the last game would come and leave a comment and they would say like, I just can't get the tempo down. I play this game all the time, can't get it down. I've been playing this game for a week. And I would come back with, so... A week is not a long time in muscle memory words. <laughs> I played the last game for almost 2,000 hours and I still didn't hit a perfect tempo and straight swing plane every time. The game is inherently hard. It's not built to be perfect every single time. You have to kind of change that mindset. But I'm telling you all, practice, practice, practice every single day. What I recommend, every this is my practice. This is exactly what I do every single day. I know it's a little bit excessive, <laughs> but what I do, I come into the practice range, I switch to practice swing. To do that, you click the left stick in, right? When you're here, what you want to do is actually hit five golf. I do this. I hit five golf shots. In a practice swing, I do five complete swings. The first two swings, I'm actually looking at my thumb path. As crazy as that sound, you're getting the eye to brain coordination right most of the time you're looking at the screen when you're playing but you're trying to look at it and trying to swing as straight as you can 
So first two shots, I look at my thumb. I'm not even looking at the game. Next three shots, I'm looking at the game. I like to pick a center point. I like to pick the aim marker. Some people like to watch the ball. So if the ball is there, some people like to watch the power meter there to the left. Pick a spot and stay dialed in on that spot. Some people pick a spot at the bottom, like at the bottom of the monitor so that they can kind of see their thumb in the periphery. Some people actually bring the controller up and hold the controller up like this so they can see it in the periphery. I like the controller resting in my lap, resting in the right in my lap, forearms are on my lap, controller is completely straight, holding it in the in my hands like it's just the best thing ever. And I hit three more golf shots looking at the spot on the screen. So I pick a spot. For me, it's the aim marker. I look at that spot and I swing, right? I do that three times. And then I switch to the next club. And I run through three. Then I'll go through three wood. Same, looking at the controller, looking at my thumb, switching. I will do that for each and every club. And then I will change to pitch shot. And then I will change. So to change your shot types, you'll learn this in the beginning tutorial. So right on the D-pad and you'll change the pitch. Do the same thing with the pitch shot. Each swing animation is different and it's hard to get used to. Then you change to the flop shot, punch shot, chip shot. And then lastly, what I do is I hit what's called a partial shot with different clubs. So I, you basically move your aim marker well back. It moves the power bar. You can see the power bar. And then I try to hit that perfect distance. So that is the routine I go through. I won't go through that. Once I get the swing down and everything in this new game, I won't do that routine anymore. But for the first few months, you better believe I'm doing that routine as much as I can. It really helps. I'm telling you all, muscle memory is everything. <laughs> Don't play a week of this game and just be like, it's too hard. I can't do it. Practice, practice, practice. That is how you, if you can get this down, if you can get the tempo down, just the tempo, everything else is going to be so much easier trust me work on your tempo get it down early but what i what i need to also talk about along with tempo so the perfect tempo region here to the right is the wide area that's the perfect tempo region here to the right the other meter here is the perfect swing path meter the gray area is still going to be a good golf shot, but a fast is going to take you to is going to move your ball towards the golfer to the left here. A slow is going to go away from my golfer here to the right. If on the swing plane to the left is going to pull it to the right is going to push it. So that's kind of what the shot what your shots can actually do. For example, if I fast it here. Perfect. I can't fast it. I'm peaked. So if I fast it here it's going to go more to the left versus if i hit a perfect now i also look at my swing plan there i pushed it so it kind of canceled each other out just a little bit and you'll 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 do that right and your swing plane's not going to be perfect right away when you first start playing this game so what's important about the tempo there's something in this game called shot shaping you learned it in the tutorial they they now the tutorial it has you do a shot shaping moving the left stick left and right for fade and draw. So you see how it moves that trajectory. If you move it to the right, it draws it, but it takes off distance as well. You see this, it goes from 274 to 270. Now, if I have a higher shot shaping stat or archetype, you can get more shot shaping. But what it also does that the tutorial doesn't talk about, maybe the tutorial does say this, but if you move left or right, any type of shot shaping you add, you see how it shrinks? Look to the right here. Look how it shrinks that gray. So the gray region and the perfect white region there. Every single time you move the loft and draw and fade, it changes that. So I myself do not do a lot of shot shaping because I don't want to get that perfect penalty. I do do some. You can actually utilize the shot shaping. I'll do a specific shot shaping video here in the future. It may be live by, you, by the time you're watching this. I know this is mostly kind of getting your bearings in the game and improving. When you're first learning this game, learning tempo, you probably don't want to be messing with the shot shaping very much unless you have to to hit around trees, fade it around trees, draw around trees. 
But you can also manipulate this for distance control. So for example, let's take a look. If I say I'm hitting into this green right here. So if I'm hitting into this green and I am in between clubs, I'm not really in this example. Let's pretend, let's see if we can choose a spot where I'm in between clubs. Here we go. So say I wanted to land it in between these two spots. There's a couple ways to do that. One would be hit a partial golf shot. So I move my aim marker back in between the spots and then hit a partial golf shot on the power bar. Another way you can actually do it is to not hit a partial, but to manipulate the loft. So as I move the loft down, to hit the ball higher, it changes the ball flight and it also decreases the distance. So if I do full loft, on this sand wedge, it flies 97. If I do a full lob wedge, this specific club flies 92. So in between clubs, it might be better if you struggle with partial shots to do loft. But what does that also do? It adds some spin to the ball, where the ball is going to roll back. But it also decreases that grave region here to the right, which is very, very tough on new players. That perfect region gets tiny, outside regions gets tiny as well it's not tiny but it gets smaller and in the beginning you're going to struggle on those so it might not be best to use a lot of shot shaping early on unless you're just insane at the video game right <laughs> so that is another way you can do it and also on on the other side of that if you're in between clubs so say i'm in between the gap wedge and sand wedge here we want to hit somewhere in between there say we want to hit like 112 distance I can hit a partial with a gap. I can do loft to take off. I could also do D loft on a sand wedge to hit 112. You see that? So there's a lot of different options you have for each shot to hit the same shot. Another factor that I didn't talk about there because I was just talking about the loft. The loft is the left stick when you're holding down LB to put shot shaping on. So let's reset. And let's go back to the same scenario here. And let's take a look at spin. So when you are when you have shot shaping pulled up, I hit the wrong, hit, I hit RB. Uh, but when you have shot shaping pulled up, when I move the right stick, you're changing spin. So you can, you can decrease back spin, increase front spin by going all the way up. You can go the go, move spin all the way down to get a lot of backspin. So what this also does in certain scenarios in this game, it increases the distance your club carries. So for example, a driver, when I put full backspin on it, do you all see what just happened? I moved from a 274 carry to a 284 carry. So you can get more distance out of your drives that way. But what does it also do? You see that gray area? Look at default. <laughs> oh, I can hit a perfect in gray here any day. When I do, when I want max distance, well, uh, be careful out there because look how tiny that area gets. And if you're playing on master or legend, it's going to be almost impossible. Not impossible, depending on how you hit your tempo. It's going to be really tough. And when you miss, it's going to be a big penalty. So be, be careful out there. Uh, but you can also see, say I have full backspin. Let's change to three wood. I get, five, I get six yards out at the very bottom. Five wood. You get a few yards. Hybrid. You get a few yards. I, five iron. You get one yard. Six iron. One yard. Seven iron, no. So attacking angle, once you get to the seven iron, does not add distance to the shot. But what does is the D-loft. D-loft. Uh, so if you D-loft to seven iron, you're going to get a little bit of distance. You D-loft an 8-iron, you're going to get a little bit more distance compared to 7-iron. But as you get up to a 9-iron, that's when you're going to start see D-lofting where you can really add a lot more distance to the club. So I wanted to go over shot shaping in this beginner's guide. I know because this is a beginner's guide to improve your overall skills and understand the game a little bit better. But especially I wanted to focus it on tempo, a little bit on shot shaping because you need to understand those mechanics. But when you change your distances in this game. So when you change your primary archetype to say I wanted to change to powerhouse, 
I would my all these club distances would be different. So when you're testing out the different archetypes when you're first learning the game and switch between them, just know that's going to change your club distances as well. Uh, so you may have to, you know, maybe not get too caught up on each club distances. Another uh, another thing I wanted to talk about, you know, as far as we talked about tempo, shot shaping, you know, different how to a practice routine to improve your tempo. First thing, get down tempo. After you get the tempo down by just in the driving range, hitting golf shots, hitting multiple golf shots, playing golf, you know, playing rounds on the course, you can utilize this practice facility in multiple ways. For one, you can hit practice shots at different greens. Pay attention to rollouts. How does the ball spin when you add backspin? How does it spin when you add D-loft? You know, I will be doing specific videos on shot shaping and other aspects of this game, looking at spin and kind of how to do how to tackle different aspects of the game. But you can hit at these different targets, right? There's not really targets on the greens besides this island green. Uh, one thing that I was, I love this new driving range compared to the last game, but I wish it had flags and targets on every single green. You don't have targets to hit at, unfortunately, uh, besides the markers on the signs, right? So maybe that's something they add in the future. But the best way to practice besides hitting drives, is to pause it, go into the practice menu, and you can choose either driving range, chipping range, putting range. So let's go to the putting range first. So when you're in putting, you can hit the B button on the controller or circle button on the PS5 controller, and you can use left trigger and right trigger to zoom in. Not sure the buttons on a mouse and keyboard. That was a question I got last year. I have no clue how to do it on mouse and keyboard. You're going to use the left stick. And you can move it around wherever you want on the green. So, and you can practice different putts. So say I wanted to, say, say I wanted to work on a close, just work on swing path and getting the right power. You can work on that in the putting green. This game has haptic feedback, vibration. Uh, so when the, con the controller actually starts vibrating earlier than you want to swing. So my controller vibrates right here. Starts vibrating here. But I want to wait a little bit. I want to wait like a split second after to hit that wide area. That's the reason I know a lot of people turn off the power bar right away. I recommend you have the power bar on to practice it. Now you can also pause it and turn on auto mulligan. If you want to keep hitting the same shot over and over. A lot of times when I practice putting, I'll start at 5 feet. I'll try to fill for the right power. I'll be doing a full putting tutorial in the future. That's not really what this video is focused on. And I'll just hit the same putt multiple times. And then I'll move back 10 feet and do the same thing. Another thing you can do is switch between switch between greens. Uh, so this is this is it's weird. You can change, so when you're, whichever green it takes you to first is the green you're locked to uh, for a, like, so for example, if I move to the main practice green, which is right back, this is actually the primary practice green. If I move here, where is my pin? You all see it? 627 yards away. So my, my actual putting, usually when the game default, it takes you here. For some reason, today, mine decided to take me onto this green. And I can't even hit LB and RB to switch between practice greens. So it seems to be, my game seems to be glitched right now for putting practice, unfortunately. So I like the putting green on the last driving range better. It was bigger. Uh, I hope they add the feature where you can move it around and practice on any of them. So if I change it to this green, for example... There is holes here, right? I have a flag, but you can't you, you can't change it. You can't change your target. That's the limit. You, I can change my see it. Just wait. It just you see that it worked for a split second, and now wait. I figured it out. You double tap. L LB, it's glitched. It doesn't work every time. So I double tapped RB. I bet that took me here. No, what did, where in the world did that just take me off? <laughs> it's the, the practice. Oh, it took me here. So here? 
and now it's broke again. <laughs> so the practice green needs needs uh, some patches, but that's how you can practice putting. But my favorite thing to do, honestly, I know this tutorial is getting a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but I wanted to cover a lot of information. My favorite way to practice is hitting shots by hitting chipping practice. So once you're in chipping practice, you can hit B. And while in this, you, you, you can double tap RB and LB to switch between holes. You can see that it actually works for the chipping practice here. <laughs> so it actually works. So here, I can place my ball anywhere. I can place it. I can hit A and place it 41s and work on my flop shot. I can change it to, to I can change my shot to a pitch shot and work on partial pitch shots. I can hit full shots by moving. I can hit 145 here and hit a full shot into this green. Say I want to work on elevation changes. I can pick it up and move it up to the fairway up here and work on a downhill 60 foot golf shot. Another thing I can do is move it anywhere on this arena and I have to actually move my aim marker. But say I wanted to play at this island green over here. It's kind of unfortunate the way you have to do it here because you can't switch to these targets right now. But I could hit golf shots into this. So you can utilize, this is one of the, I think one of the best ways to practice in this game. Utilize this, pick up your ball, place it in different areas, hit different type of golf shots, pick, maybe try to hit this pole. Maybe try to, and then practice shots from the sand, practice splash shots, practice every type of shot you can think of. The more you practice here, the better you're gonna get on the actual course. So, I know I covered a lot here as far as improving your tempo, improving overall your game, how you can utilize the practice facility to get better. But in closing thoughts, I'm gonna have more specific tutorials on each aspect of the game. If I didn't cover something that you wanna know, you wanna hear more of, let me know down in a comment below. I can cover, a, I can cover just about anything. So I'm still diving into the specific mechanics on this game. Who knows by the time you're watching this, the full tutorial playlist could be live. But practice, closing thoughts is practice, practice, practice. Get your tempo first. Get your distance control first. So hitting that perfect power region, that right region, that white region on the power bar. Learn those first. Tempo, perfect region on distance control. Then learn your shot shaping or learn how to hit partial shots. I don't do a lot of shot shaping. I hit partial shots versus doing shot shaping to control my distance. Everybody plays differently. Learn, draw, and fade. T t work around with the different mechanics. It's going to get better. Change different grips. Work on maybe try different controllers out if you have that ability. I know if you're on console, you're locked to the controller you're playing on. But try different grips. Try different. Maybe have the, instead of holding it in the lap, hold it, hold the controller in the air. Or maybe look down. I know I talked about all this, just trying to summarize some things. But thank you so much for watching this video to the end. I hope you all got something helpful out of this. I know it was a little longer than I intended it to be, but I had a lot to talk about, right? You all are beginners watching this video. I doubt there's any advanced people watching this. So you all want to learn the game. You want to get in bet. You want to get better at the game. And these are some tips to get better. Stay tuned to the channel for many more gameplay tutorials. I will see you in the next one. Drop a like if you got some enjoyment. Subscribe for more. As always, have a fantastic day, everybody.